Right, Giga gave us a new video. This is called Fantasy Anime is Entering a New Era. Really? Is it really? Give it to me. I will not take any vending machine slander. If you've actually seen this isekai, beyond just giving it a dumb judgment based off the title alone, if you've seen this isekai, you know it's decent. Get that stuff out of here. Me and the boys are watching some real fantasy. This year, it feels like we've real seen a full-on resurgence. Real fantasy, a.k.a. native isekai. Basically, isekai except characters where you can't self-insert yourself in there because, you know, there's no fucking loser neat that got reincarnated or summoned. It's a fantasy anime. Not soy boys getting transported to another world. No more, I got reincarnated as toilet paper. Now I wander the world. I'm, I'm surprised this doesn't happen yet. There probably is. I got reincarnated as fancy toilet paper for the richest girl, the most popular and hottest girl in my high school. I'm surprised a series like that doesn't exist. Oh, letting elf girls wipe me. Oh, it's depressing. I could actually see that being a thing. Yep. Just pure hard fantasy, taking the genre back to its roots with two shows leading that charge. Free Dungeon Meshi Freedom. Now, because we are the trash isekai reaction channel on YouTube, unfortunately, no one gives a fuck about Frieden in my channel. No one cares about Dungeon Meshi in my channel. Every other goddamn reaction channel, they upload a Frieden reaction easy 10k plus. What is wrong with you people? You monkeys are making me stuck in this box of watching the shittiest, most just dumbass isekai. Everyone else is out there having fun watching their fancy ass fantasy and then I can't even get there, bro. Frieden, I had to drop this shit like three or four times because of how bad of a like uh, acceptance it got in my channel. And then I had to jumpstart this shit every once in a while because I knew Frieden was that hype. Dungeon Meshi flopped upon episode one. I really want to brute force it. Uh, season two is coming back out. I really want to try it out. Frieden? and Dungeon Meshi, two fantastic fantasy series that shine in completely different ways and have left their mark on the anime community this year. Some people actually say Dungeon Meshi better than Furiden. Yeah. But if you're a fully functioning adult and learned how to count properly in kindergarten, you may notice that this is only two. Two shows taking and then there's the new trailer that came out a couple weeks ago, right? Some atelier witch girl, mage girl thing. In the spotlight. And as we all know, that is illegal in the anime community. I mean, what are we going to call this? The, the big, big two? two? Yeah. yeah. No, thanks. I think I'd rather take two steps off the Empire State Building. Thank you. Okay, wait then. On <laughs> what the fuck kind of joke was that? <laughs> big two, it's better to have three rather than two. Because if you have only two to compare, there's always going to be that comparison for number one not to say that doesn't exist in big three but like two is just like more of a personal fucking comparison three you can kind of meme around with it and say this is better this is better it's like an order of one two three but when there's only two things to compare i think it gets really volatile thank you okay wait that's taking a bit too far because as we all know everything in the world has to come in threes shonen manga mm -hmm. film trilogies Degenerates. But what if I told you there is a fantasy manga that can stand up to these two shows? A fantasy that excels in something totally different from the hard hitting story of Free Ren or the yeah. insane world building of Dungeon Meshi. A series that already has an anime confirmed for 2025. Atelier. Which means, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the cusp of a fantasy big three. That's right, gamers. I'm here to talk about the next big fantasy yeah. anime. Yeah. Demon Slayer. <laughs> Hashira training arc, baby! Oh, this isn't even Hashira training arc. This is fucking Swordsmith Village arc. This got Anime Awards winner of 2024 Crunchyroll's best fantasy. <laughs> I mean, it is fantasy, though. Like, what do you categorize as fantasy, right? People probably think of this as a battle shonen, Unga Boonga Slayer, right? You're going out there fighting, but it is in the fantasy world, right? This is not fucking reality. It's a fictional fantasy world, and... There's no fucking isekai characters. Everyone just exists in that world. So, yes, it is fantasy. I mean, which hat Atelier? 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 Atelier. I am Atelier. I honestly think this is going to be the next big fantasy show to take over the anime community. But before we get into pure fantasy... Oh, great. We got, what kind of ad is this? Uh, I don't know. User discount code GIGUK for first idol game. I don't know. Ooh, Booba. Ooh. Oh. Oh. The on the nose name, but uh, she's down. Oh, wow. Definitely got some. Did she just pull up her pants? That's crazy animation. Look at this. 
She just pulled up her pants. Just because of the on the nose name, but uh, she's definitely got some. It's a zipper. Oh my god, it's a zipper. See? The zipper part. It goes on. Oh my god, this is genius design. He got some firepower. And if you like yeah. the look of these characters too, you can dress them up in different outfits and even take them on dates. But if that. <laughs> take them on dates, guys. Enjoy the slow life in Isekai. Woo! Yay! For put these girls to work. That's right. Get to the fucking rice field. Y'all bitches gonna pay your fair share of the rent. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Use your discount code Gig or Happy One Annie for your first ten pulls. I don't fucking know, bro. Sure, you thought to yourself, I can. Sure, you thought to yourself. Wait, wait, wait. Video? And now back to the video. All when right. you were a kid, I'm sure you thought to yourself, I can be whatever I want to be. Do anything I want to do when I'm a grown up. Unfortunately, yeah. if you want to do. And then reality hits you in the face. You realize that the world is a miserable, depressing place. All those dreams and hope dies. And you use anime as a means of escaping your pathetic life that is at hell every day. Yup, welcome to the club. Magic, in the world of Witch Hatatilia, that's a privilege only given to witches. And only mm. a few people in the world can ever become witches. Okay. Coco wants to be a witch. Because as we all know, witches get bitches. Do they? Witches get bitches? Which is Yuri confirmed. I don't think that's Coco's primary motivation. The closest she's ever gotten to magic is a book she bought from this mysterious witch on the street corner when she was a kid. And just look, remember kids, don't be like Coco. Don't talk to strangers, say no to drugs. And for God's sakes, don't go accepting magic book from shady looking people in the back. I mean, that person does look super shady. The whole mask on their face just looks so ominous. Back alley, okay? Especially if that book smells like pee pee. One day, though, her village. Hmm? She gets a visit from a real witch, Kifre, who finds himself in a circumstance of having to. So, guys are also considered witches, huh? There's no, like, wizards, or maybe I'm. Um... <laughs> Maybe I'm just assuming, but Keyphrase seems like a guy, so witches are just like a title given to people with formidable magic powers in this world. Though her village gets a visit from a real witch, Keyphrase, who finds himself in a circumstance of having to cast a spell to help out. But before he does, he goes to Coco and tells her, Okay, Coco, I have a very important task for you. Mm -hmm. okay. Whatever you do, make sure nobody, I repeat, nobody sees me cast this magic. This is very important. Do you understand? Snitch the next panel. Mm hmm. Coco immediately watches Kifrey casting <laughs> his magic, and what she sees is him drawing some shapes. Shapes drawing. that look eerily similar to some Clock. of the patterns in the magic book she has. Hmm, she thinks. I wonder what would happen if I tried drawing some of these patterns myself. She destroys the house, commits a class A felony, and turns her mother into stone. What? Oh, oh, Jesus. This, this beginning is fucking dark. Okay, so this is not just like a. Happy-go-lucky show, huh? So right off the bat, she tries to imitate magic and just like huge terrorist attack happens in her own town. And she is then what? Just claimed as a fucking criminal? She destroys her house, commits a class A felony, and turns her mother into stone. Huh. In the industry, we call this an oopsie-daisy. With her parent acquiring... <laughs> Just walk it off, mom. It's fine. We'll get you later. In the new status of mom, the Rock Johnson, Keyfrey decides... <laughs> what did he just say? We call this... An oopsie daisy. Yeah. With her parent acquiring the new status of Mom the Rock Johnson. Mom the Rock Johnson. That is a fucked up joke for a woman that just got petrified. And Keyfrey decides to take Coco under his wing in hopes okay. that he can find out more about this mysterious witch that sold Coco that book as she begins her journey into the world of witchcraft. Okay. But like, I thought the drawing looked similar to what Keyfrey was doing. So wouldn't Keyfrey have an understanding of what magic caused that? Or maybe there are some similarities, but what Atelier did was so specific with that book. So the whole journey is to find that merchant, to find the origins of the book and see, like, what is this power? How does this even happen? And wizardry. Which Atelier presents itself initially as your typical coming-of-age story in a fantasy world of magic. So you may be wondering, what does this series do to allow it to stand up to the fantasy juggernauts of Freeran and Dungeon Meshi? So, Frieden, we haven't seen Dungeon Meshi, but I hear a lot of people hype Dungeon Meshi for the world building. Frieden was more of just a chill vibe story, just kind of slow burn. Everything is very cinematic and atmospheric, and you go through learning how important it is to, you know, treasure your time because nothing is forever, stuff like that. So then what kind of scratch does Atelier have? 
Is it a pure power fantasy fantasy? I'm not sure. We're allowed to stand up to the fantasy juggernauts of Free Ren and Dungeon Meshi. Free Ren gave us a beautiful, introspective tale about the passage of time and appreciating the important things in life while you yeah. can that hits harder than most anime ever could. While Dungeon Meshi's world building is some of the most intricate and- People really glaze Dungeon Meshi for the world building. And again, I am very adamant to try this series back up. Because season two is coming. I don't want to miss out on it. And- Apothecary Diaries as well. Those two shows, right? Apothecary Diaries, Dungeon Meshi, Furiren. Big three shows that were airing when every other reaction channel was fucking popping off. All my colleagues just farming, farming. I upload that shit, no one watches. Because you motherfucker just want to see the next Google Gaga fucking dumbass isekai. Well thought out I've ever seen. Crafting a living, breathing ecosystem that doesn't just feel alive, but you get a sense that it's also fully functional, like you're stepping into a life-size fantasy terrarium. So okay. what does Witch Hat bring to the table? Great art? Got that. Interesting characters? Got that. Sure. But the real thing that sets it apart is what? that, in short, it has one of the most interesting magic systems I've ever seen in anime. So... It's just sweaty. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if this is... It's not a power fantasy yet, but they're like getting really in-depth with the actual magic. Like, Freedom, yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of glossed over magic, right? We learned about how you can only use one type of magic at the same time. You can't use it in defense at the same time. You know, you, got, you learn about different shit, but it didn't really go super sweaty about the combat system, so... Atelier does that? Anime or manga. A hard magic system that not only lays the groundwork for creativity and imagination, but is also engraved in a core part of the world building to Toes. Toes. The power system, I wonder if it's gonna be... Like, like for example, the Irregular Magic High School is a show that went really sweaty about their magic system, but while it was grounded in some level of pseudoscience, it got so convoluted and just... I don't know, it, it just became so all over the place where it, it just seems like it's trying to be smart, you know what I mean? But this show, you're telling me it's really good with Creativity that. Creativity and imagination, but is also engraved in a core part of the world building to present okay. us with the interesting moral conflicts contained within this story. But this is what you get for chasing after magic. All the tragedies that occur, they're on your shoulders. Huh. It seems to be a pretty dark element to this show, huh? I mean, the show starts off with her fucking up her entire place and like the mom turns into a stone thanks to the random street merchant's book and as you try to chase after that you get to learn more and more about magic and how dark it can be i'm liking the tone already contained within this story but most importantly it's just pretty damn cool right so i'm gonna spend the next few minutes nerding out about magic systems but to do so i'll have to explain to you how the basics of the system works okay. so get out your notepads everyone because we're going back to school let's Hello, learn class and welcome to magic 101 where i'll be teaching you the basics of how magic works and which has atelier any questions no, Timmy, you may not go to the bathroom. I don't care if you're desperate, just shit yourself like every other self-respecting <laughs> Timmy's parents are gonna call the school for a fucking lawsuit, Giga. Kid. In the world of Atelier, magic is cast by drawing seals, which look like this. <laughs> yeah, okay. And these have to be drawn with special conjuring ink. Conjuring ink, special ink to draw special seals. And... That's it. No special enchanting, <laughs> no custom-made Gamer 3000 RGB magic wand, these are all Korean. What the fuck? What is this shit? Shiny, IU. These are EXO, B2B, newest, 2PM. These are all K-pop shit. BOA, G-O-D, H-O-T. These are all K-pop wands. What the fuck? All you need is some special ink and the basic ability to draw, which means essentially anyone can do magic. Okay. Except for me. If you've seen my ability to draw. Yes, even you can do magic, Timmy, really? if you stop sniffing the conjuring. There's nothing about, like, mana. There, you know how usually magic is uh, limited by the amount of mana one has? And a lot of the times, people are born at a young age, and the people that actually... <laughs> people are born at a young age sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> Those that are young uh, train the mana at a young age to expand their mana pool, like in Mushoku Tensei, right? So, so far it sounds like you have ink and you draw, and there is no mana yet. Bring it, kids! Do not sniff the conjuring ink, please! A basic seal is made of three simple parts. Three. The sigil, which typically goes in the center and denotes okay. what kind of magic you're going to be manipulating. Cool, okay, the most important, not, maybe not the most important, sigil in the center, what type of magic it will be. Manipulating. You want a fire spell? Draw fire this. Sigil. Thinking of casting water magic? Start with this. Cool. You got earth, wind, 
Shadow, word, sword, thunder, power, sleep, card, a lot of elements. the cloud, expect the unexpected now. Next up, we have key. <laughs> that was a banger. What was this? Card capture? That was a banger at the end. Unexpected now. Next up, we have keystones yeah. that go around the sigil. These are different signs that denote exactly how the element in your sigil will act. And we've got a sigil assault. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. What did you say? Next up, we have keystones that go keystones. around the sigil. These are different signs that denote exactly how the element in your sigil will act. And we've got a boatload of. So a sigil is the element of the magic. And then the fuck the signs, right? They then determine how they will act. You can levitate, you can disperse, you can pull different vectors, right? Pull, push, anything like that. What you do with the element. Loan of different signs that will determine exactly what form your spell is going to take and exactly how it's That's going to be lot. controlled. Which is why it's very important that you draw keystones. exactly how. You so sigil in the middle, element, keystones to determine what that element will do. You want your spell to act. One sign a bit longer than the other. Congratulations, you just you you can your neighbor next door with some water magic. Excuse me, you what? Longer than the other? Congratulations, you just bukkake your neighbor next door ah, with some water Ah, my favorite, magic. tag. Need a big gust of wind to send you flying? How about you try drawing a wind sigil with a massive arrow pointing up and you'll be gliding like... Guy, Genshin like Impact. <laughs> Fuck, of course that's the first thing that came to mind. By combining your different... He definitely got a fucking Netland sponsor. Different signs, you should be able to craft a spell to do exactly what you want it to do. Five simple ways to completely unstuck Genshin Impact. Guys, are you listening carefully? Do this shit. Do this shit. Get out of gotcha, guys. Get out while you can. Oh, Timmy, you understood all that? You tried drawing your own seal? Oh, let me have a look. Boom. What'd he draw? A dick? <laughs> yeah, what'd you expect, right? I, in high school, everyone just rocking drawing dicks, bro. I'm surprised it took him this long to make a dick joke. What does it do? Can you see me after class? And after all that... Hey, yo. See you after class for one. All that's left to do to complete the spell was to draw a complete circle around it. Okay. Because every witch knows... That's it? So you have a sigil, which is the element. Keystones to determine what that element of magic will do. And then you finish it off by just having an outer ring. And with an outer ring, you are done with the magic. So there's no mana. Anyone can do, draw the same shit and the outcome will be the same? Really? There's got to be more to this than right, right? Because as every witch knows, if you like a spell, you should have put a ring on it. <laughs> I think it was Dumbledore that said that. I mean <laughs> sure, for sure. Hi kids, it's everything you need to know to become a witch and start casting your own spells. Do we have any questions? At I have a lot of questions. So the seal, I, I, I don't know. To like, there's no mana involved in it. Everyone is equal. But in the beginning, I thought that those that can use magic are called witches. But I guess... Anyone can become a witch by understanding Magic 101 and refining their ability to draw these sigils, keystones, and a circle around. How does combat work? Right? You're going to be drawing the entire time? Are there people that can do incantationless magic? That would be OP, right? Dudes that aren't beholden to a sigil and keystones, but simply can just think about what it's going to do and just work like that. And Timmy's just shit himself. Great. That's the core basics of the magic system in Witch Sorry, Atelier. Timmy. I thought it was such a genius system because the core building blocks are simple enough that anyone can understand, but by iterating on these basic concepts, it can get increasingly complex that makes you just think about magic in a toe. So it's simple, but it can get really, really deep. There's a lot of toes, man. These, this, the, the amount of grippers they're showing is crazy. Totally different way. When you have a grasp of the basics, then you can start doing stuff like linking spells for more powerful effects. You can link spells? Oh. Hold up, hold up. Combo seals? For the basics, then you can start doing stuff like linking spells for more power. Oh, wait, 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 go back one more time. More powerful. Fuck, 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 come on, come on, come on. See this pattern? It's made up of countless seals etched into the surface. Even the tiny seals in great enough numbers have the power to part the sea itself. It looks like a fucking sword, huh? This is looking like a blade where there's so many different seals etched into it that links to each other. So, got it. Alone, it's very simple, but you can layer it, you can add it up together. There's so many different possibilities you can do with the magic system because of this. More powerful effects. Nested glyphs where you can enclose multiple spells into a bigger spell to get more complex effects. Okay. Spell toggling, where for example, you draw two halves of a spell on a shoe, then bring them together to complete the- Oh, 
also toggle, so it's like inactive until a certain condition. Ring so you can quickly toggle the spell's effects on cool. and off. Different cool. ones to help witches draw on specific surfaces. From the approaches they take to the tools. Man, different wand. They go to a wand system because remember, you need, you know, the special ink and to draw it. But like, there's like different wands to help you draw better for different shit. Ink wands, wood curl wands. Conjuring Elk, we know that. Palm Choir, circular notepad that fits in the palm of one hand. Convenient in times when a seal must be composed covertly. Component Pestle, Seer Needle Wand, wand with needle-like tip that grows hot with magic, able to edge casting steels into surfaces such as metal, stone, wood, and leather. Huh. Different surface etching. Okay, this is getting pretty sweaty into the, into the, you know, the magic system. Specific surfaces. From the approaches they take to the tools they use, everything has been carefully thought out like these tools have been crafted to logically solve a problem if this... I think I'm gonna love this anime. Like, this is kind of like scratching that power fantasy itch that I rarely get from native isekai shows. Not to say that we don't get power fantasy during cool moments like in Frieden, but like, if Frieden is all about just kind of teaching a lesson about to appreciate the limited time you have, right, while being in a fantasy world, and Dungeon Meshi being about the world building, this seems like it's super sweaty about the combat system itself. The magic system is very in-depth, very deep, and which means that there's going to be opportunities for fights and shit that's going to be even hype, right? This magic system were to exist. And I have no better way to encompass all this other than saying it's just so fucking cool. This might be a bit of a curveball, but in a sense, the magic system here was actually a bit reminiscent to me to yeah. coding. God, I never thought my coding course in university 13 years ago would finally come in handy. At its most basic, coding yeah. is just a set of instruction built on a few core concepts that you yes. input into a system that interprets those instructions to do exactly what the code tells it to do. Mm -hmm. If the code doesn't act the way you envisioned, well, it's not the computer's fault, it's the human error with the code, the code and then you have to do some debugging. But instead of just searching up your errors on Stack Overflow, I imagine debugging magic seals would be something like, oh hey Timmy, you want me to have a look at your fire spell? It's not doing what you thought it would? Well, you just burned down the entire fucking village, Timmy. Yeah, thanks for that. It Sounds like the consequences of fucking up these magic seals are really bad. It's gone. Your mom's dead. Yeah, how about you debug your life choices, Timmy? Oh, you- Because I got to Leah has to debug how he fuck- how she fucking- Petrified her mom. You want to learn about loops? Well, how about you loop yourself to the nearest orphanage, Timmy? Because that's where Jesus. you're going. But because Giga really hates Timmy and children. Wait, I just realized I unintentionally just repeated the plot of this manga with fire instead of rocks. But because the logic of this system is so defined, Basically. it enriches so much of the world and characters. Because instead of just telling us that this person is a genius witch or this person has a specialized skill set, we can actually see it ourselves through how they approach solving problems with their own. Mm, you know, the best approach to storytelling. Show, don't tell. Don't tell me this person is godlike. Show me this person is godlike by having them act and do different things that shocks you as an audience thinking, this isn't the way it's supposed to happen. Own knowledge of the magic system. Find it hard to accurately draw bigger seals? Well, maybe by combining the effects of a bunch of smaller seals and linking them together, you can replicate the effect of a bigger seal. Don't have a specific spell you need to identify ingredients in a potion? Well, how about you repurpose a destruction spell you saw earlier, but reverse the seals to conjure up the opposite effect and remake the core ingredients? A lot of different creative ways to work with the seals, huh? Even though the system is so complex, sorry, simple, there's so many complex ways you can like, work with it. Like different coders writing a program, there is no singular way to solve a problem. And by setting the rules of- That means that quite often in programming, especially in technical interviews, there's this thing called a brute, uh, brute force approach. Whenever you're solving algorithms and data structures questions, um, uh, you want to approach it in the level one thinking, which is brute force, which is not the most optimal way. And in that example to this show, maybe in order to draw some seals and stuff like that, you actually have an unoptimal way of creating this magic fire. But like, there's way more optimal ways, if you understand coding, to use different data structures, to reduce the time complexity, the space complexity, make it so much more optimal so that the runtime, as the input parameters scale higher and higher, it takes like shorter time to complete that task. So they'll probably delve into it too, right? Where some people are just so much more optimal, even though they're doing the same thing, because that person just knows more about 
magic and how this shit works while the beginner is just doing, you know, the most unga boonga level one way of doing it. The system clearly, it sets the stage to breed creativity in a way that you can appreciate that goes beyond. This person is a powerful witch because he does magic good. I think <laughs> the first time I truly appreciated okay. this was when I saw some of the first major battles. See, as a witch, you major battles, baby. Oh, looking like dude already like oh, I love Frieden. Freedom was a vibe. It was fun. But what I wanted more from Freedom was the hype by battles and p power fantasy moments. And of course, the show isn't just about that. There's more to it. But for sure, everyone gets excited during the hype battles, right? And it's looking like with such a deep magic system, this show is going to have better battles than Freedom. Because Freedom is not trying to be that kind of show. But this show is, you know? So it's like... Really getting me excited about it. You have several approaches you can take, especially in a battle situation. Now, if you're less experienced, maybe you prepare a notepad with some pre-drawn all-purpose spells. It might not be as specialized for every situation you're in, but they're quick and easy to cast by just circling the spells that you need. Maybe you have a specific battle style where you just engrave the actual spells onto your clothing for permanent effects. If you're a little bitch baby. Now Do you think that it seems like where you engrave the seals are... Even, perhaps even more important than just drawing it right because like that different wand you etch it onto different surfaces it's not just paper you write this shit. sometimes you can like have a sword with all those seals on it right clothing different places your feet your shoes do you think that like you can etch a seal into your eye like some dude some some dude literally had like a tattoo in their eyeball of some sort of fucking seal. So it's like eye powers, you know? Anytime you have anime, eye powers are one of the most common things because it's just so cool. Like beyond just etching a seal onto just regular surfaces, clothes again, having something in your body, that sounds OP. Now, if you want to see where the true experience and skill gap comes in, this guy bloody walks in and is accurately able to cast spells quickly on the fly without any pre-made books, assess the situation, then while blocking attacks, draws a counter spell with his fucking feet, flies towards the enemy, then based on the shape Damn. of his opponent's seal and the environment, is able to correctly deduce the exact way the opponent's spells work and initiates a counter spell based on its weaknesses. And it was at this point I've realized I have not been this engrossed with a fictional power system so intricately crafted, since I first encountered Nen, and I do- Hunter Hunter comparison! I hear the Nen system is one of the best combat systems in Battle Shonen's, right? There's like Chakra, Spiritual Energy, like Reiatsu, just this concept called Ki, but Nen I hear goes pretty sweaty. This so far, Giga- and again, this is a very brief summary, right? Giga could go even more in depth, but obviously he's trying to give us a concise, you know, a, a, a summary of what's going on. And it's going to get even more sweatier. Like, again, this show, because of how much emphasis there is on how the magic works in here, just looking like the fights are going to be even more hype. And, like, the art in the manga looks stunning. I hope whatever studio picks this up does not fuck it up. Now, we saw a trailer of it, right? We saw a trailer, but this trailer was... Obviously, it's not going to give you the full idea of what's going to be. It looked pretty polished. At this point, I've realized I have not been this engrossed with a fictional power system so intricately crafted since I first encountered Nen. And I do not say those words lightly. But beyond just being a really cool way to show what characters are capable of, it's also from the system that all the major conflicts of this story arises. And we okay. get the interesting moral dilemmas. That the studio is Zom 100 Studio Bug Films. We're cooked. <laughs> I hope y'all, you guys are gonna enjoy about three to four episodes, and then we gonna go on a hiatus. We're cooked. Yep, we're fucked. Atelier is already ruined before it started. Zom 100. Oh my god, what a fucking catfish that was, bro. What a catfish of an anime that was. Not saying the whole anime is bad, but goddamn, while it was airing, the things that they promised us. So ironic about how fucking, oh, you know, finally, I don't have to work my shitty ass fucking office job that, you know, has such a shitty work-life balance with such a terrible toxic work culture, zombie apocalypse are freeing to me. And it's so ironic because then the studio then went on a hiatus due to fucking budgeting and fucking scheduling issues, most likely derived from poor management and people being overworked. It's like... God damn, that's sad. The series presents us with. I think the most interesting concept is the idea that absolutely anyone can theoretically cast magic. Given mm. everything I've just laid out, I'm sure even- Yes, anyone can cast magic. Sounds crazy, right? Because like, yes, there's going to be like textbook people that learned in like, a, in like a proper way. But there must be like crazy geniuses. Just prodigies that were just innately gifted just through sheer instinct and vibes or just drawing up random shit and creating magic that was never thought to be possible, right? That does really make this so compelling. 
And still, no mana system. He hasn't, Giguk hasn't mentioned this resource called mana yet, right? Well, he, he said the Nen system, but I think that's more of like how the powers work, right? The Nen system could be basically just this magic system. But again, there's no like resource known as mana. One can theoretically cast magic. Given everything I've just laid out, I'm sure even you can conjure up a spell or two. And there was a point in the world's history where that was- Since the day that whatever we have spread belief that can, magic can only be wielded by those with innate power. If the truth were to proliferate once more, our world could be just in chaos. So it sounds like people are trying to gatekeep this shit, but it's like, nah, you can do it, man was the case. However, give everyone unrestricted access to a tool that can help but also cause great harm to the people around them and- That, that is kind of crazy concept, right? This is again, just imagine like super fucked up people with so much raw talent for creating magic. Oh man. Oh man, I can't wait to see what kind of villains there are in this show. Uh, I'm sure everyone's only gonna use it for the betterment of humanity, like real life, right guys? No way. Guys? No the world way. was constantly embroiled in war. Spells that did unspeakable things were conceived. Dark rituals, tragic accidents, human experimentation, and other crimes became- Human experimentation. I mean, what we did to our mom kind of counts as one, right? Became a normal part of the world. So one day, the leading governing bodies made a pact to change the world forever. First, okay. the entire population would have the knowledge about magic. They erased the memories of magic from the populace. Yo, this is an attack on Titan shit. Yo, they're erasing history. Making shit, cause like, so it sounds like long time ago, right? Everyone had magic. It was utter chaos. Unfathomable shit happening. The strongest beings then try to gather the people, erase the memories of magic from the populace, and then make sure that only people with quote unquote innate power can become witches. And that's why in the beginning, you know, that's what the setup was. Wiped from their memory, with only a few people, aka witches, being given the knowledge of how to cast magic, passing that knowledge down to only a few select individuals. Damn. Secondly, certain spells would be- Eternal youth, transmutating the body, right? So, forbidden spells? Certain spells would be outlawed forever as forbidden magic. It's a curse meddling with the wind alt okay, magic with no exceptions spells that greatly alter the environment and spells that are drawn or directly affects Ooh, what the fuck dude? transmutation of the body man the human body except for memory wipe spells this is the black and white justice system that governs the world you have the normal law-abiding witches that uphold the rules of the world and the shady brim caps who practice the forbidden magic oh man this forbid the, the shitty brim caps and in the middle that dude looks like the person from the streets right so oh this faction man look at them look at their evil ass hands hiding their faces and practicing forbidden magic of course i'm always drawn to like you know the villains and these dudes are just looking so strong and you know scary the good people the bad people the forbidden magic the forbidden magic Ooh, scary. I don't know why this. but as you continue the story you start to realize wait who's got more of a point here why are the good witches trying to wipe the memories of innocent kids just trying to help out is it wait a minute are we the bad people it fair to keep doctors from practicing what is technically forbidden magic on humans when all they really want to do is to heal people and save more lives? Is it morally okay to keep the knowledge of magic to only a privileged few when it's a tool? Yes, because I don't trust the average retard with this kind of power. Like, again, I'm going to bring this crazy ass take here right now. I still believe that regular human beings should not be able to drive on the road. Yup. I'm saying it, bro. Call me a fascist all you want. Think about how dumb the average person is and realize that half of them are dumber than that. These dudes have the same power to kill you on the road without you ever making a mistake. The average person, the average monkey, myself included, we are such ignorant, selfish, just pathetic, miserable creatures. To give them powers like this is an insane thing to do. I do believe that a higher body of governance needs to be in place to make sure that the greater deal, like goods of society can be maintained without having absolute chaos and having everybody with these powers. Nah, dude. A select few should be able to fucking drive and make sure that the infrastructure is in place so that everyone can get what, where they want to be without having to, you know, without ha having the threat of being killed without even making a mistake yourself. 
tool that can empower the lives of so many people. Because yeah, magic can be dangerous, but hey, maybe the only thing that can stop a bad witch with a wand is a, is good, a good witch, witch with a wand. Yeah, just give everyone guns, right? <laughs> School shootings happen in America? Well, if the kids and the teachers also had the guns, then maybe they shoot the bad guy, right? I hear about this dumbass talking point all the time when shit pops off in America. And I'm like, hmm, you think you're cooking until you really think what you're doing. Hell yeah, brother. Seeing our characters trying to find their place in this morally gray justice system is one of the big driving forces of what makes the world and characters so interesting. The magic of which had Atelier at, at, Atelier in Atelier. It's just waiting for its anime adaptation to bring it to a whole new audience. I know I haven't talked much about the characters or overall plot progression or the amazing art and paneling or just how fantastic the world building is, but I think this is what's going to make it stand out so much. The magic Even system. With the influx of so many amazing fantasy anime we have to choose from right now. It's a series that takes something as ethereal as magic and gives it a sense of tangibility and yet somehow doesn't take away that sense of wonder and awe. In fact, by allowing me to appreciate the mechanics it makes the magic of the world even more magical so yeah if you need another fantasy world to dive into go check out witch hat Tilly. i will not because i can't read this shit or the reactions can't be blind oh man i can't wait though 2025 right next year man witch hat atelier we will definitely be trying it out at atelier at atelier 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 oh my god atelier it's a french i was right atelier i i, I said at yeah at the end I was right, just a blind guess. Word. He straight up just rated this a 1 out of 10 afterwards. My god. It's a French word. 8.63 to 1. And that's pretty much it. This is a pretty good summary of the show without actually spoiling the plot. I, I know there's some spoilers like in the beginning, the mom being like turned into rock and stone like that, but it's inevitable, inevitable right? I think that this show, from what it seems like based on Giga's summary, right? It seems like that... It differentiates itself from Dungeon Meshi and Frieden because, again, what's Dungeon Meshi good at, right? Like world building. It's all about the deep world building. Frieden is about, like, the lessons of valuing time and enjoying the slow burn of a fantasy world, right? And enjoying the atmosphere and all that jazz. And this show is all about, like, magic. The core components of magic, how magic is used. This sounds like it could be peak power fantasy. It sounds like the fight's going to be amazing. Then there's this like moral debate of like, should we keep the magic for ourselves? Should we give the magic to everybody? What rights do everyone have to use such magic? It's sounding like this fantasy is going to be my favorite fantasy. Then again, I haven't really finished you know, or even started. Like we've only watched one episode of Dungeon Meshi, but regardless, big three of fantasy anime coming up, maybe. Which had Atelier being number one? Who knows? I'll be there to glaze. I'll be there to milk it. Hope you guys will enjoy the videos when it comes. But hey, please go give Giguk a like on the video. Sub to his channels if you haven't. With our help, this small anime channel of 3.6 million subs could reach 4 million one day. I'll see you next time.